His own world is a safe harbor, a carefully tended and walled-in garden, closed to the public and hidden from prying eyes. His own company is the best. Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about extroversion, introversion, sensing and intuiting in Jung's words. And this is a follow up to the video that I shared earlier about Jung's words and how he described the thinking and feeling functions. So I already gave a couple of caveats in that one that the language is from a hundred years ago and it's translated from German into English. So the descriptions are going to sound a little antiquated and different. And in the thinking and feeling video, I also shared that he called those the rational functions, those decision making functions, because they are part of and the product of them is a reflective and linear process. And so the sensing and intuiting functions that we're getting into today, he called them irrational, not because they don't involve cognitive energy, but because they don't depend on logic or values per se, they just process information as it is. And so again, in Jung's words, Merely because the irrational types subordinate judgment to perception, it would be quite wrong to regard them as unreasonable. It would be truer to say that they are in the highest degree empirical. They base themselves exclusively on experience, so exclusively that as a rule, their judgment cannot keep pace with this experience. So this also goes back to, we're talking about the perceiving types now, so those people who have the either sensing or intuiting, either extroverted or introverted in their dominant position of the type. And now I also wanted to add the extroverted and introverted attitude descriptions to the mix because I neglected to do that in the previous video. Jung described extroversion as characterized by interest in the external object, responsiveness and a ready acceptance of external happenings a desire to influence and be influenced by events, a need to join in and get with it, the capacity to endure bustle and noise of every kind and actually find them enjoyable, constant attention to the surrounding world, the cultivation of friends and acquaintances, none too carefully selected, and finally by the great importance attached to the figure one cuts and hence by a strong tendency to make a show of oneself. Accordingly, the extrovert's philosophy of life and his ethics are as a rule of highly collective nature with a strong streak of altruism and his conscience is in large measure dependent on public opinion. Okay, so that is the extroverted attitude and now we come to the extroverted sensing type. I call it sensing because I've learned from mentors like Dr. Linda Behrens that these are processes, these are functions, so we should use the gerund, the ING form, because it is something that we are actively doing. Jung back in the day called it sensation and intuition, so he used nouns. So he refers to the extroverted sensation type as such. Objects are valued insofar as they excite sensations and so far as lies within the power of sensation, they are fully accepted into consciousness whether they are compatible with rational judgments or not. The sole criterion of their value is the intensity of the sensation produced by their objective qualities. However, it is only concrete, sensuously perceived objects or processes that excite sensations for the extrovert those exclusively with everyone everywhere would sense as concrete. Hence the orientation of such an individual accords with purely sensuous reality. So in other words, they are in it, they are immersed in the reality. And the description that Jung made, and this is an addition again from what I've learned from Dr. Behrens, is that because Jung himself was probably an intuiting type, the descriptions of sensations sound a little bit more passive than the descriptions of intuition. So when you're talking to somebody who actually has sensing preferences, it is an active engagement with the environment in the extroverted sensing case. So it's, an, it's very immersive and active if it is a developed function and if you're using it in a developed and not just basic way. Okay, because the basic description is you use your five senses, but then the extroverted sensing type, ESTP or ESFP, 
really takes it to the next level and immerses it, him or herself in the reality and engages with it. Okay. And now, extroverted intuiting, the extroverted intuitive type. The intuitive function is represented in consciousness by an attitude of expectancy, by vision and penetration. But only from the subsequent result can it be established how much of what was seen was actually in the object and how much was read into it. Just as sensation, when it is the dominant function, it is not a mere reactive process of no further significance for the object, but an activity that seizes and shapes the object. So intuition is not mere perception or vision, but an active creative process that puts into the object just as much as it takes out. Since it does this unconsciously, it also has an unconscious effect on the object. The extroverted intuiting types are E. NFP and ENTP. And again, object is the thing outside and subject is the person who has the preference. So he goes a lot more actively into intuition, but he does say just as sensation. If it's in the dominant form, like I said, if it's like a very developed function, highly used and used with competence, then yes, there is an active component to it. And now the introverted attitude. His own world is a safe harbor, a carefully tended and walled-in garden, closed to the public and hidden from prying eyes. His own company is the best. This type does not travel for pleasure, but to execute a preconceived idea. At every step, the sanction of the subject must be obtained, and without it, nothing can be undertaken or carried out. Such people would have replied to St. Augustine, I would believe the gospel if the authority of the Catholic Church did not compel it. Always he has to prove that everything he does rests on his own decisions and convictions, and never because he is influenced by anyone or desires to please or conciliate some person or opinion. So again, broadly speaking, the introverted attitude is the way that your general psychic energy, when it is confronted with an object, goes back to your subject. And so here, again, Jung's words, I think, are going to make them clear. Introverted sensation apprehends the background of the physical world rather than its surface. The decisive thing is not the reality of the object, but the reality of the subjective factor of the primordial images, which in their totality constitute a psychic mirror world. It is a mirror with the peculiar faculty of reflecting the existing contents of consciousness, not in their known and customary form, but somewhat as a million year old consciousness might see them. Introverted sensation transmits an image which does not so much reproduce the object as spread over it the patina of old age subjective experience, while extroverted sensation seizes on the momentary existence of things opening up to the light of day. So introverted sensing has often been called like the remembering or it's like a memory thing, but it's not memory in the psychological terms of where you have a representation of something in your brain and then just call it forward. It's a deeper appearance of the, a thought, a feeling, a physical bodily sensation that is connected to your past and also the patina of age-old subjective experience. So the just everything that has ever come to pass in your life is a reference. And I think it's great. I wish I had much better introverted sensing. The introverted sensing types are ISTJ and ISFJ. Now the introverted intuitive types. In this way, introverted intuition perceives all the background processes of consciousness with almost the same distinctness as extroverted sensation registers external objects. For intuition, therefore, unconscious images acquire the dignity of things. But because intuition excludes the cooperation of sensation, the images appear as though detached from the subject, as though existing in themselves without any relation to him. To a judging type, thinking or feeling, this naturally seems inconceivable, but is nonetheless a fact. The perception of the images of the unconscious produced in such inexhaustible abundance by the creative energy of life is of course fruitless from the standpoint of immediate utility. 
But since these images represent possible views of the world which may give life to new potential, this function, which to the outside world is the strangest of all, is as indispensable to the total psychic economy as is the corresponding human type to the psychic life of a people. Had this type not existed, there would have been no prophets in Israel. So the dominant introverted intuiting types are INTJ and INFJ. And he, Jung mentioned here that because intuition excludes the cooperation of sensation, that is basically the idea of the compass. Sensing and intuiting are on opposite sides of the compass, just thinking and feeling are on opposite sides of the compass. And that is basically referring to the mental energy that a function takes up in your brain or in your mind at the time. And you can't do two things at once. You can't have specific, concrete, tangible sensation at the same time as you have ideas about the possibilities of about the connections and the patterns, right? So there's always going to be a give and take, but, or there's always going to be a, maybe a tandem function or a time delay. So it's the way that they explained it in the Myers-Briggs course way back in the day was if you're thinking about the four functions at a crossroads if the car is at a crossroads if all four cars drive at the same time there's just going to be a big crash in the middle right so one has to come after the other or one usually goes after the other and those are extroversion introversion attitudes and the introverted irrational sensing and intuiting functions according to Jung with a little bit of description from me around the place. So I hope you found them helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to talk more about these. See you next time.